Welcome to this module on user interface basics. And uh, the primary focus of this module is HTML and CSS. And that seems um, probably fairly elementary, and it is. Um, but the objectives of this are not really so much HTML and CSS, although I want to make sure that everybody has kind of the, the basic idea of it so that when we go on to be using a framework like Twitter Bootstrap, you won't be lost when you see a class definition or you know ID selector or something like that. Um, but the more important part of this module is to get used to using a set of tools which will um, make it easier for you to do more complicated web application development. So when we start using the Play Framework and so forth, um, if you're using the same types of tools for the basic um, HTML, CSS stuff that you're using for the Java, you know, Play Framework stuff, then your life is going to be a lot easier. So, um, what makes doing HTML and CSS easy within a Java web development um, um, context is using Eclipse with two plugins. The first is called Web Tools. The second is called WordWrap Plugins. Go to the IDE. Uh, module to get instructions for installing web tools and WordRap plugins. Those two are very important to make this whole thing work. Second technology is Google Fonts. Um, you know, the, the built-in fonts, we've seen them everywhere, they're kind of boring, and um, Google Fonts is a free site, has over 600 fonts in it that you can use without charge, and then plus there's a bunch of websites that show you good combinations of Google Fonts which is really important because, let's face it, most of us geeks, we have no clue how to combine typefaces. So um, my view, personally, I would never pick two typefaces myself. I'd go to one of these places where there's typographers saying, hey, you know, use these two together and then find some combination that looks nice with respect to whatever you're trying to achieve. Okay. Um, the third and fourth things, it's, it's really super helpful to have kind of a WYSIWYG um, interface where you type HTML or CSS and you see it as soon as you make a change to your CSS or um, HTML files, the results show up in the browser. And so that's called auto reloading. There's a variety of ways to do it. The tool that works, that I found that works pretty good is called Live Reload. That's what I'm going to recommend for the class. I'm not going to require it, um, although it's like, your life is so much more miserable if you don't use it or something like it that um, that I just you know you should just go use it and then finally um, I'm gonna um, I think we should all be using Chrome developer tools which is the Chrome version of the Firefox Firebug Firebug tools they're very very similar so once you use one you can use the other really without much problem but let's just all standardize on one for this semester so I've semi-arbitrarily picked Chrome Developer Tools. Some people like it a little better than Firebug at this point. I don't really know. Um, you know, For what we're doing, either will work, but I'd rather have all of us use the same tool so that when you're working with somebody else, you know, things look familiar. Okay, so HTML, CSS, we're going to, um, you know, <laughs> headers, paragraphs, links, you know, itemized lists, the HTML5 doc type, it's, you know, nothing real, like, sophisticated there. Um, and for CSS, for this module, the idea is I just want you to get comfortable with simple CSS manipulation of HTML and, you know, kind of attaching properties to tags and so forth. Um, and, and then we'll have one wad where you got to do some, use some floats. But... Um, we're not going to get crazy with CSS at all because basically we're going to use Twitter Bootstrap as a framework to kind of provide higher level abstractions for dealing with placement and, you know, um, responsiveness and so forth. So, you know, I don't expect you to be a CSS ninja at all. And I, I don't even think that's a good goal in this day and age, really, um, when we've got frameworks like Twitter Bootstrap that, that can elevate things to a... To a higher level, but you did you do need to kind of understand you know kind of high school CSS or something, um, and so that's one thing you'll get a chance to to look at. 
Okay, so basically there's these three tools, the development approach, as I said before, this is the important, kind of the more important fundamental thing I'm, I'm wanting you to grapple with. Using Eclipse plus some plugins along with um, the Chrome browser, so you get Chrome developer tools and then we use Live Reload in order to, um, every time we make a change in Eclipse, we can see exactly what the result is in a browser. Okay, so let's go to a, um, the demo. Okay, and so I'll get rid of uh, PowerPoint. I always, it's always a fun moment. And what you can see is I've got Eclipse over on the left-hand side. I've got my browser on the right-hand side. Um, here's the module, okay? So um, I've, there's, I provided you a tutorial to HTML. You know, read through all this stuff, even if you haven't, um, you know, if you think you're pretty good in HTML, it, this will take you 15 minutes or something to read through. Probably a good idea. Um, and then CSS. There's a lot of different tutorials out there, and I provide some optional. You know, if you want to get more into it, there's stuff down here you can look at. But pretty much, if you know these two, if you just go through these two things, you'll be good to go, really. And then there's this Google Web Fonts um, page, which explains how you do it. And basically, you know, it's it's very simple. You're going to include a, a link in your head that that downloads the actual font that you want and then you're going to use some CSS to describe you know where it is that you're going to apply that particular font and you're always going to provide a backup in case the net is down and something happens and, and you can't retrieve that font from Google um, you can fall back to one of the, the built-in fonts um, and you know as I said before it's super hard to figure out what fonts look good together so um, I provided a link that I want you to look at just to see you know, people who know what they're doing, um, you know, how they combine fonts. There's 600 fonts in there, so even, you know, figuring out the good ones, that, you know, it's beyond me. And then if, you know, those 10 aren't enough for you down in this optional part, you can go through a bunch more people's opinions about what are goods. And then there's even this font combinator if, that you can go to if you, if you feel like you know what you're doing. <coughs> With typography, there's an online tool that allows you to select pairs of fonts and see how they look together. Um, you know, if you want to go for it, you can, um, but um, I'm, you know, I'm not teaching typography and I'm not expecting you to have any skill with that. Um, CSS colors, you know, you probably want to know a little bit about that. And then here's some tutorials on Chrome developer tools. So that's the stuff that you're going to go through um, for the class. And uh, now what I want to do is just kind of go through the steps involved with setting up a simple project. Um, so we're going to say Eclipse new, and instead of Java project, we're just going to have a vanilla project. And for that, we're going to go into the general area and just select project next. And we'll just say this is the UI basics demo. Um, and then we'll say finish. And now we've got this um, project here. And you know we can go into it if we really wanted to. And we could say new. And we just want a file, and we'll call the file name index.html. Um, oh, I'm sorry, and I gotta select that place where it's gonna go. Okay, so now I've got this file, and I could say something like doc type HTML, which is how I want things to always be, and um, and then inside the doc type, I've got an HTML tag, and inside the HTML tag, I'm going to have a header tag. And you can see that because I've got Google Web Tools um, installed, you can see both that it's um, colorizing the, the HTML tags, which is nice. And also, is, is you know, when I, when I finished typing in header, the, the start tag, it auto-completed the end tag for it. Okay, so that's some nice stuff that you get. Um, by because of the fact that we're using um, using this uh, web tool plugin, okay, it, it recognized that there was the HTML file type, and and we're now using an HTML editor, okay. And you can also even notice down here that in the lower left hand corner where my mouse is, that it's showing me what set of tags I'm inside. So I'm inside the HTML t element and inside the body element of that. So the last thing I'll do is I'll make a paragraph and I'll say. Obviously, 
this, right? Because, you know, what else could you say? Oh, this is the other cool thing. So I type a, um, an end, and then as soon as, or uh, the, I'm sorry, the, the less than sign, and as soon as I typed the backslash, it auto-completed the corresponding open tag that was, you know, closest in scope to it. Okay, so I didn't actually type, all I really typed was this, and then it auto-completed the next. So I'm typing that, and then I type one more character, and bang, it completes it. Okay, so Eclipse has, you know, it has a kind of a reasonable editor for HTML that does some nice things for you and, and saves some keystrokes. Okay, so now I got this index.html, and I want to see it in the browser, and furthermore, I want the browser to be kind of smart about doing updates for me. So the way I'm going to do that is through this live reload thing. And so with live reload, you've got to install this application that runs. It runs on both Windows and uh, Macintosh, um, and I'm, I'm kind of not sure about um, Linux, but you can check or see if there's something equivalent for Linux. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this folder uh, to um, Live Reload. So this is an application in the background. Once you've added this folder, it's going to monitor all of the files in this folder and then um, detect changes. Okay. And the second thing we have to do is once we've got that folder monitor, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say open file and in my UA Basics demo window, I'm going to show this, which is hello world. And now I've got a, I also have to install a browser extension so that this background process can communicate with the browser and make the browser refresh itself when any changes are detected. So there's these two steps to actually setting it up. So I'm going to enable live reload for this particular file. And what that means is I can now say, um, hello world, this is Philip. And as soon as I save the buffer here, Okay, it shows up automatically in my browser. And that's going to just, you know, obviously I could have gone over here and clicked this reload thing, but whoa, will that be painful, you know, when you're making lots and lots of changes. So it's really worth the 10 bucks or, you know, kind of looking around to get something going that gives you the same kind of, you know, auto update mechanism. Okay, so that I just saved this out here and you can see it shows up on this side. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is, just to show you kind of another, one last little bit of this, is we're going to create a, um, a file called style.css. And then just to show you that things are nice, we're going to have, we're going to split this, the editor screen in two so that we're going to see our index.html file down here. And we're going to see our style.css file up here. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is we have to connect our um, header. What is that? Sorry. Um, we have to create, we have to um, connect our, um, our CSS file to our style file. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to say link rel equals style sheet href equals style.css okay so now we've got um, we're now going to be loading this style sheet into our um, into our HTML file and so let's go ahead and make a simple change to the presentation so I'm going to say that the um, that the color of the font inside the body should be red Okay, so I'm going to save this out. Let's see what happens in the browser. I save it out, and voila, look what happens. All of a sudden, we've got hello world in red versus the default color of black. That's because Live Reload is not only monitoring this index.html file, it's monitoring all of the files that are in that particular folder so that when any of them change, it's going to do the appropriate thing, reloading. Okay, so that's, again, you know, just one more thing that makes things you know, makes life a lot more convenient doing this kind of development. Okay, so the other thing is since we're using Chrome, we can inspect things. So there's a couple ways you can do it. Inside Chrome, we could say view developer tools like that. But the way you, kind of a, a faster or more interesting way to use it 
is to actually select the element you're interested in and say inspect. And that'll take you right to that line down here as well as all the associated CSS stuff. And so we can see that there was a body definition um, that uh, where we specified that the color of the body right there should be red. Okay, um, and you know there's a tutorial you can go through on, on Chrome Developer Tools to see how it works. There's some nice features here, um, and uh, you can see actually that what's happening is there is this script from Live Reload that's being kind of auto magically inserted into this index.html file, even though we don't see it here. When it's loaded into Chrome, we, we, we have it inserted, and that's how it actually implements this, this uh, live reloading thing. Okay, so, um, so let's say now, just to kind of make life more interesting, let's override that color property and for this particular paragraph. Okay, so when we save this out, First thing we see is that we've got hello world is now in blue because the property, uh, you know, the most direct overriding of this style occurs in the paragraph tag, not in the body tag. And then what's kind of nice is you can see over here in, in our um, Google, our, our Chrome developer tools that the body tag, you can see, the, or the body style has this color red, but it's, it's um, struck out indicating that it that it has been overridden by a property in the paragraph associated with the, the paragraph element. Okay? Alright, so I hope that this little intro has got you all psyched to use Eclipse, Chrome Developer Tools, uh, and Live Reload for your development, and I'll see you next time.